Art is meant to show society as it is without any political correctness. What could be perceived insensitive or untactful is meant to expose society's flaws and it isn't targeting anyone in particular. Movies like Barat or even Pretty Woman would be impossible in today's world of political correctness and cancel culture. If we don't separate artists from the art, then we are limiting creative freedom that leads to worse art or no art at all. This is because the artist will be expecting retaliation for what they say and that might not even be related to their art. Just like J.K. Rowling got canceled simply because stating what she believed in. Also, if you are an actor who plays a villain, you don't necessarily get challenged on the street and the society doesn't accept that. Why is that when we our art brings up uncomfortable topics like the one portrayed in Netflix Cuties, the backlash, backlash is shutting down the conversation and attacks the creators? Lastly, speaking from experience, as a professional woman who has a side hustle as a swimsuit model, I should definitely be separated from my art in a professional context. No one and me either, nobody should be separated. Nobody should be penalized for multiple talents. What defines someone as an artist is their creation of their art. A singer who doesn't sing isn't a singer, just as a dancer who doesn't dance isn't a dancer either. Theoretically, art can be appreciated without any knowledge of who created it or why. But even then, our mind's eye imagines an artist and motivation, providing the lens through which we view the work. The beauty of a market system is that it empowers individuals to promote their values through their choices. In other words, we vote with our dollars. When we listen to our favorite musician's new album or buy a ticket to the latest blockbuster film, we are putting money in content creators' pockets and telling the world that we want more of that kind of content produced by those kinds of people. That said, we do need to be wary of a cancel culture that treats all infractions the same preventing people from learning from their mistakes and becoming better people. Hello and welcome back to another Millennial Minute. I'm your host, Oni Higgins, and you've already heard from guest Jen Sorova, Young Voices contributor and host Think Tinker. On YouTube, joining her is Kat Murty, Executive Director of Feminists for Liberty. Now, Jen, can someone really be canceled? We've seen Mill Gibson say some crazy things a few years ago and went away for a while, but he's slowly starting to come back. What's your thoughts on that? When you're canceling someone like Mel Gibson or Kevin Spacey with a movie, you're not just canceling them, you're canceling everybody who worked on that movie, all the other actors, all the makeup artists, all the producers. So and it, you only sometimes as an actor and somebody who works in show business, I know that you only get those chances every once in a while. We train for those chances like Olympic athletes. And when Olympics get canceled or boycotted, everybody feels bad for them. So why is nobody feeling bad for us? You should remember it's not just one person. It's everybody around them that gets canceled together. And Kat, what are, what are you thinking about that? How do you feel about that? So I actually think that Jen makes a pretty good point here because – when we do focus just on one artist or um, you know a famous celebrity, we can undermine the work of everybody who worked on that production. Where I think the canceling, canceling uh, should actually happen is if we know that someone is problematic, if we know that someone promotes views that hurt other people, it's not an issue of we shouldn't watch that one film, we shouldn't be not creating a market for them to be hired in the future, right? We want to create a world in which we put our money towards the values that we agree with. And if an actor does not have the values that we agree with, it should be a big deal when they're being hired again and again and again and forcing people who are good people to have to have their work tied up with this other person's values. So, Kat, you mentioned something really interesting. So, with someone like Harvey Weinstein, who have been convicted of horrendous crimes, should TV and streaming services stop offering his movies? So, this is actually, when it comes to movies, it's really complicated, right? Because I, I've spoken to people, young women, who uh, worked on films that Har Harvey Weinstein produced, and they actually tried really hard to mitigate all of the negatives that he did, and yet they were the ones who faced the majority of the blowback. Um, should Harvey Weinstein continue to get to build that career? No, I absolutely don't think that he should. I don't think that he's been um, at all regretful of what he's done, and I don't think that he's actually interested in making a change. But I think that we should be careful not to drag down everybody who, because of the way that the system has been set up, were forced to work with him and oftentimes was his victim 
in in our attempt to right the wrongs of giving a platform to someone like Harvey Weinstein. So, Jen, what do you think? Should TV and streaming services um, also stop um, offering his movies on there? So I do think there will be more opportunities. I hope that there's going to be more opportunities for those actors involved and the women actors involved in the movies with Harvey Weinstein. Again, as Kat said, and as we've said this multiple times here right now, uh, we should be thinking more structurally about that. We should be thinking of other people who are involved in this. And we also should be thinking about how the people responded. For instance, someone like Jenna Marbles on YouTube that created very racist, very derogatory videos nine, ten years ago that make me cringe now, and I wouldn't watch now, but nine, ten years, years ago, she was expressing what the society was. She was actually documenting all the flaws of the society, and we should be thankful to somebody like her. And now she came up and apologized, but then she, because of the backlash, because of so many people empowered by cancel culture she just canceled herself she quit and fans are asking her to come back but she doesn't because she doesn't have the emotional uh strength to just deal with all of that and that's the problem with cancel culture got it so on a personal level if an artist does something that offends you do you stop consuming their work i guess we'll go with jim first Yes, I do believe people have the freedom to stop consuming content they don't like, and they can even tweet on that. They can tell their friends about that. Or on my platform, I would tell people about that, the reason that I stopped watching that artist or buying their stuff. But I wouldn't necessarily create a boycott and a whole movement empowering other people and rallying them around in this negative creating a very negative, toxic environment for people. For instance, a YouTube creator, James Charles, had some a random video come out against him, and then people just rallied to the point that they made him feel suicidal, and he was in a very dark mental space. And we learned, and it's a year from then now, and we learned nothing from that. We keep empowering people with cancel culture and bullies that we're trying to fight against. Okay, and Kat, what do you think? Would you stop consuming their work? This is something I've actually had to make some very personal decisions about. Uh, we all know R. Kelly, the musical artist. Um, I grew up with his music. That song, uh, Ignition, is one of my favorite songs from when I was a teen. I don't listen to it anymore because I don't want to create an incentive for platforms like Spotify to continue have, uh, playing his work. I don't want to reward the producers who looked past his multiple cases cases against him, multiple charges against him for decades and continued to prop up his career um, because he was still making money. Um, so I do think that Jen brings up a really good point. I think we have to look at who the artist is and whether or not they've learned and grown just as all of us do, right? Like values change over time and what we consider right or wrong in the ways that we think about things do change over time. And if an artist is willing to do that and an artist is willing to apologize for what they did and hang a light on it and grow from that, I think that that's very different from something where we see someone repeatedly over and over and over again doing something that's really awful with no remorse. And uh, I don't think that we should give a market incentive to allowing that kind of behavior. Well, this is certainly an interesting topic. Thank you both for being here. Um, and for all of you at home watching, thank you. Have a great day.